Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer live pop-up chat and I'm not entirely sure if you can see this tiara or not so in a moment I may adjust the camera but hello and welcome to today's Royal Family News broadcast and it is Friday the 10th of April 2020 again I think I've said this almost every day this year where is this year going I know many of you are, around the world are still being asked to stay at home by your governments, to stay at home, to stay safe. Um, so I do hope that you are all coping okay, as good as what we possibly can with that. Um, I can now on this channel um, say the word coronavirus and COVID-19. YouTube have sent all of us creators um, a little memo to say that we can say those words, we can talk about it, but there are certain things that we can't do, which I would never do anyway. For example, showing people suffering or so sh showing images or talking about things that could really, really cause people to be distressed. But we can talk about it and at least now I can call it by its name. So um, I hope you are all coping wherever you are in the world right now. As always, this is a live chat. So any links that I share throughout this chat any, anything that I reference, I will post in the description so you can click on those links if you're watching on Catch Up. I'm just going to go and find the chat room. I am wearing the beautiful Cambridge Lovers Not Tiara, the one of course made famous by Princess Diana, currently worn by, uh, by Duchess Catherine, but of course it was actually Queen Mary's. So, um, right, I am finding the live chat room. Here it is. Actually, no, I don't think I do need to adjust the camera. I think you can all see the tiara perfectly. Hello to all of the channel members who, of course, are highlighted in green. I can see Tisha, Nancy, Constance. Uh, you guys are here. Also, I did say yesterday that I was going to update the emojis that channel members can use. Um, I have done and I have updated with some new royal faces. So open up the live chat screen now. If you're watching on Catch Up, you should still be able to see the um, live chat and I will post some of the amazing emojis that I managed to create. So we have the yellow fan flap and the black fan flap and the queen emoji, which I did um, show you yesterday. But we now have the addition of Prince Philip. Can you see Philip right there? We also have my personal favourite one, Princess Anne. Can we have a big clap for the amazing Princess Anne? We also have Prince Charles. We have Camilla. We have um, Prince William. We have Duchess Catherine, Duchess Kate. We have Prince Harry. And we have a Meghan. Now, when I get another... I think um, YouTube told me when I get another 18 channel members, I can add even more emojis to the list. So I will be able to add, I will, I will take suggestions on what further emojis to add. So let me know in the comments what other emojis, when I'm able to, uh, you would like me to upload. <gasps> Nancy, you are correct by saying no, Diana. I think I should put a Diana when I am able to add more, I, I'm going to make a note of the Diana. Yes, I think I do. I'm going to make a note of that one. There we go. So let me know any that you think that I definitely 100% should include for channel members. Do let me know. Um, guess he's using, <laughs> using the emojis already. Aren't they amazing? L Laura, you access them, access the emojis by being a channel member they are channel member exclusive you can find how to join it says join there's a join button on the main page um tisha says yes diana um yeah i definitely think i need to add a diana um i could also add a me emoji as well <laughs> right okay let's talk about the main stories of the day so um a surprising story which came out, in fact, actually I found out about it because I was browsing through Twitter. You guys know I don't have an active Twitter presence, but I, I am on there so that I can search for royal stories and I can see, I can keep my feet on the ground and I can read comments and see what people are thinking, what people are saying. And one of the things that popped up 
in my feed was a series of photographs uh, posted by Antonia Marshall, um, who has a connection obviously with Sarah, Duchess of York, and it showed a series of photographs of Prince Andrew and Sarah making care packages for the Thames Hospice. Um, there was also, there was more photographs as well on her Instagram account, which I did go on to. I contacted her and asked her uh, very kindly if she would allow me to use those photographs in a video, which I did. Um, so if you haven't seen the photographs already, do pause the video if you're watching on catch up, just so you know what I'm talking about and hop on over, see the video that I made prior to this one and you will see a series of photographs of Andrew and Sarah um, making care packages. Now it's believed that they actually made the care packages at um, Royal Lodge in Windsor, which is their family home, which they still share. Obviously, Andrew and Sarah are divorced, but they are um, very much, I think, still a couple. Um, and of course, they have co-parented uh, their children, Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, who are now fully grown. But they do remain a very, very close, tight-knit family. In fact, I, I don't think you'll probably find a closer-knit family than the Yorks. Now, of course, we know that everything has been going on in the press, you know, tail end of last year, still going on this year with Prince Andrew and all of the allegations that have been made against him. Um, so in light of that, which is still ongoing, and I'm sure you can appreciate it is still ongoing legal matters, um, Prince Andrew has actually taken a step back. Uh, the Queen, of course, in consultation with the Queen, has agreed that he would step back from all, all of his royal patronages and duties. So at the moment, he's kind of, um, I think everyone can agree, he is in pretty much limbo land. And he has not been seen publicly um, for three months. Um, and he has not been seen, obviously, in public with Sarah for some time. So these series of photographs came as quite a surprise when I saw them. And um, I don't think anyone can obviously discount the important work that is being done, um, you know, creating care packages um, for people who need them in the time of the coronavirus and COVID-19, I think um, is, is very honourable. Um, and I know I've read the comments on that video, a lot of people are questioning motives surrounding doing that. But I think the one thing that I think I could take from those photographs, and I, I'm looking at some of those photographs now, the one thing that I think I can see in those photographs is I think I see a man that has been slightly humbled. Let me know your opinions. I know all of you are going to have your own opinions on this, but when I see those photographs, I don't necessarily see... Um, the man I saw, I think everything has taken its toll on Prince Andrew. And I think I can see it in those photographs. Um, I think he looks like a man who has been worn down. Um, and I think someone perhaps who has began to realise everything that he has lost um, with all of these allegations and scandal that has been going on. Um, I think he's finally maybe appreciating the life that he had, um, you know, and I think he's probably missing as well the responsibilities and the duties that he was performing on behalf of the royal family and the Queen. And he looks humbled to me in those photographs. And I know everyone is going to have their own opinions on the motives around it. Um, and people are more than welcome to express those opinions, uh, as long as obviously um, you don't be too um, ab abusive. Nobody wants to be abusive. Um, those comments will be removed. But you can express your view, that is fine. Um, but, you know, like I say, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that there will be a conclusion to this one way or the other um, this year. And I know obviously with everything that's going on in the world right now, some things may be put on hold, uh, but I am hoping that there is, you know, a conclusion one way or, or the other with all of this. And I think all of us want that as well. Um, like I say, one way or the other, whichever way it goes, 
Um, and I think the thing that everyone agrees on with this whole situation is that whatever the law is should always be followed to the letter. Um, but it is really nice to see people um, doing work for, for the country, um, creating these care packages for people who need them is a really, really valuable thing to do. So I think that also should be applauded. Um, these care packages will be received by people who really do need them. And I did link in that video to the Thames um, Hospice. So if you want to check out that charity, you can check that out. I will post that again here now. Uh, let's go and take that. Um, there we go. So I posted the link, of course, to that charity. Um, it's believed that, like I say, those photographs, the bulk of those photographs were taken at Royal Lodge in Windsor, and then they delivered those packages, obviously whilst uh, respecting um, the government advise advisory at the moment, which is to social distance. Now, obviously, Andrew and Sarah are living in the same house, so they are able to be within close proximity to each other. But social distancing was observed, obviously, when they were delivering um, these care packages. So um, fear not uh, that they weren't breaking any um, advisory uh, roles with regards to that. And obviously, as you can see, when they were standing um, outside the Thames Hospice, they were, you know, the correct distance apart. So um, all is well there. Um, Prince Andrew was wearing what appears to be a Ralph Lauren shirt. Sarah, of course, with her uh, famous red locks um, swept into, a, um, into an elegant um, ponytail, which had been pleated, a pleated pony with some yellow flowers in her hair, red check shirt, obviously matching in uh, with Prince Andrew. You can see an array of things going into the bags. You can see cupcakes. And I think the cupcakes were um, courtesy of Kika's Cupcakes. Um, and there were, there were lots and lots and lots of really, really nice things going into those care packages. So I think, you know, the, the act of being charitable should be applauded, of course, you know, in these situations that are going on. Right, I want to go and um, see what people, of course, are, are saying. Let's have a look. Um... Uh, Leslie says Duchess Meghan, not Meghan. You say Duchess Catherine, so it's Duchess Meghan also. Um, usually when it's Harry and Meghan lumped together, I just say Harry and Meghan because Prince Harry and um, and Duchess Meghan is a bit of a mouthful. Um, William and Catherine, I normally say for um, William and Catherine. But with the emojis, they have different... Um, different oh you can't see them but i actually called them different names so i think with the emojis uh i've actually called them um d kate as in duchess catherine or it's d megan so if you use little uh the, the two little dots uh, and then type d megan d catherine if you're a channel member the, that emoji should come up uh, let's have a look what people are saying Yes, um, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is now out of um, intensive care, but he is still in hospital. Um, Laura says, I was very happy to see Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson together making the Easter care packages. Uh, Mercury Angel says, strange that Prince Andrew has been given more of a relief in the media than what Harry and Meghan have been going through. Charlie T says, hello all, happy Friday, you look gorgina, thank you so, so much. Um, oh, yes, I can see Diana in your profile picture, Nancy, and she always looks gorgeous. Elaine says, both Andrew and Sarah look tired, I do feel they made the care packages themselves. They definitely made them up, I mean... You know, we had the, ev <laughs> there was photographic evidence of them putting, putting the things into the bags. Um, let's have a look. Um, Elaine thinks he does look humbled. Have a look at the photographs and then come back and tell me what you think. Um, Live Love and Love says, ooh, Elliot will never admit, um, 
he low-key didn't like Megan. He's just being civil. Why talk about Andrew? I would refer you to my videos that I made at the time when Megan came, when Megan was first announced as being, um, as being, as dating Prince Harry, or rather Prince Harry was announced as dating Megan. And I refer you to those videos and all others all the way through. Um, I keep my receipts. My receipts are there for all to see. They have not been edited. They have not been removed. All of my videos, all of my weekly live chats are there. And all the way through, I have been nothing but supportive of Meghan and Harry's relationship. Even in the early days when people were saying, oh, it'll never last. She's a TV actress. It's all Hollywood and showbiz. You go back and watch those videos. Watch my comments. At the time when it was announced, I said, look, I think there is something different about Meghan and this relationship here. I didn't see it as being something flippant. I said at the time, Meghan is different. He's not, she is not the usual type of girl that Harry typically went for. Back, at, back in the day, he went for the kind of bohemian, blonde, that kind of thing, you know, good, fun time girl. And I said, wait a minute, there's something different about this one. Um, Megan seems different. And I didn't know much about Megan at the time. I, I've never watched Suits. Nothing against, against Megan in Suits. I just, I'm not particularly keen on those types of dramas. Um, they don't particularly appeal to me. So it's, it, it's the type of show rather than who's in it. So I didn't know about Megan. I, I've never read the TIG. Um, so to me, she was a new character on the stage. Um, so I very much, you know, took her on board from what I could see. And I said, hang on a minute, wait, she's different. You know, she's educated. She's intelligent, uh, clearly intelligent. She already does charity work. She's already independently wealthy. There's something different about this one. And I said, um, you know, watch this space. Don't be too flippant. I don't think this is just a flash in the pan. I felt it was serious. And if you go back to those videos, it's all there. All of my receipts are there for all to see. So I don't really think um, low-key doesn't like Megan, I think is a bit of a phrase that doesn't really do justice to the hours, the hours, countless hours I spent in the early days defending Harry and Megan's relationship. So I refer you to those videos and then come back and say that I low-key don't like Megan. Right. Um, Barbie says, I would have been impressed if a photographer weren't there and it was done quietly and privately. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, those photographs ended up online, which is why I said, you know, people are questioning the motives. That is true. People are questioning it. Um, Mercury Angel says, I do agree that Andrew feels more humble, as so many do when they realise how good life was. That's the impression I'm getting from the photos. And I know people are going to get different interpretations of it. But to me, he looks like a man broken that has lost almost, you know, almost everything. Um, you know, he's not, I think perhaps maybe he took for granted a lot of his lifestyle and the work that he was able to do. And I think it's come, you know, everything has come at a great cost. And I think maybe he's he's realised that now. Um, Sarah says, if His Royal Highness is humbled, allow him to cooperate fully with investigations. Um, like I said, the full letter of the law should be followed in all cases, regardless of who you are. Um, and if there is a case to answer, that case should be brought. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to scoot all the way down, all the way, all the way down to the bottom to see. Let's have a little look up. Um, let's have a look. Um, Mercury Angel says, funny people here are going on about what Elliot calls the royal family. Yet I see so often they introduce themselves with their first names. A lot of the time when it comes to video titles and stuff like that, it's what 
a YouTuber can fit in the title. Um, you know, titles cost lots of characters when it comes into, uh, into YouTube titles. We have 100 characters that we are allowed in our um, titles when we make videos. Um, and only the first 70 of those 100 characters are actually visible when you do the scroll, when you flip through on mobile devices or things. So every letter counts. <clears throat> a lot of the time, when you are really, when you have a lot to put into a title, you leave off the um, person's titles because they take up a lot of characters. So sometimes it's easier to say Andrew and Sarah or, you know, William and Kate or, when you've got a lot to put into a title, a lot to cram in, sometimes it's easier to just knock off the titles. That's the way it is, I'm afraid. Um, Laura says, is a channel member the same as patron? No, they are different, completely separate. Channel member is what YouTube set up for different benefits and perks on YouTube. Like for example, the little badges next to your name showing up in green, the emojis that I can put on, they are completely separate to Patreon, to Patreon, I should say. Um, you're more than welcome, Leslie. Um, Becky says, you are have always been nice about their relationship. Harry and Meghan, of course, thank you so much. Um, Tim thinks that Meghan might be pregnant this summer. Who knows, maybe. Maybe we could hear the pitter-patter of tiny feet again soon. Uh, Peter says, I'm chilling out and you're self-isolating at home. Oh, wow. Wow. And you're watching Mr Bean to keep your spirits up. Indefinitely. Watch British sitcoms and uh, British shows. That will, that will keep your spirits lifted. And re-watch the Queen's message as well. Um, Candice says, I can back up Elliot completely. He has always been supportive of Meghan and Harry together. You go and... The receipts are there. I'm not going to go and make a montage compilation. I've got to sit through hours to get all the positive things I've said. Uh, but you go back, watch those early chats, watch, find, locate the live chat where, um, that's round about the date when Prince Harry was first revealed to be dating Meghan, because I remember speaking about it quite clearly. I was sat in my kitchen talking about it, and it's all there in that one. Go find it, watch it, it's there. Um, Liv Lumna says, it's my opinion and it stands. Thanks for responding to your comment anyway. I would say go watch those early videos. Um, Kimberly says, you've always been kind. Thank you. Um, Pam G says, Harry and Meghan compliment each other perfectly. Uh, they were well suited before they even met each other. Um, Tim says, I wonder if Andrew will remarry Fergie. Who knows? I mean, they pretty much live together as if they are married anyway. Um, let's have a look. I'm going up just slightly, trying to find... Uh, right, where did I... Where did it skip? Right, I've lost my place in the comments. Where was it? Right, bear with me a moment while I try and find them. Um, Carol says, just joined. Who said you didn't like Megan? You were excited over their, over their relationship from the start. I was indeed. Um, Elaine says, I'm disappointed. I had high hopes for Harry's marriage. She said she would hit the ground running. Well, she did hit the ground running. I mean, things things just went a little bit south from from that point but she did I mean Megan was absolutely um I, I said at the time I felt like she was an almost an oven ready royal meaning that she had all the things all read all the skills already needed to be a royal and I think the royal family most definitely recognized that in Megan um she was given a lot of things um to do for the royal family that you know the other members, other non-members joined marrying in didn't get before marriage. You know, she was announced as going to be part of the Royal Foundation. She was touring. She was doing engagements already pre-marriage. Um, so Meghan was afforded, you know, a lot of things that other people marrying in didn't get. And I felt at the time, and I still do, 
um, that that was because they recognised that she had all the credentials to, to literally hit the ground running. And, and she did. All of the work that Meghan did on behalf of the royal family was warmly received by the public and the royal family themselves. Um, so she did. She did hit the ground running. She did exactly um, what people expected Meghan to do. Um, Barbie says, you're always fair, even when reporting about someone I don't follow. I can depend on your fa fairness 100%. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Pam G says, your clarity, honesty and accuracy when reporting anything about the royal family are why I have followed your post for a very long time. Don't forget, I have been, you know, doing this YouTube channel for five years. I have not been doing it you know, just since Harry and Meghan, there have been so many YouTube channels bringing up just basically doing gossipy sorts of stuff. Um, since Harry and Meghan, I have been doing this channel long before Harry and Meghan. I will continue doing it, you know, now that they have stepped back as being senior royals. Um, for me, this is not a flash in the pan. For me, you know, this is something that I have been doing um, for five years now. Um, Nancy says, I miss seeing the Queen behind you on the wall. There will be artwork coming. I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, I'm back filming in what's now in my dining room. And um, at the moment, things are a little bit tricky with getting things in, as I'm sure you can appreciate. So there will be artwork on the wall behind me, but I'm having to wait for it. Um, which, you know, hey, things are the way they are. Um, Pam G says, you let your viewers make up their own mind after listening to your reports. Well vetted. Um, I love the entire royal family. I think there's, there seems to be this kind of, um, lots of factions have formed over the, over the time that I have been doing um, this YouTube channel. And um, it's almost like you have to pick a side. You have to either be Team Cambridge or Team Sussex or you know, pro the Queen or pro this or negative towards that. Um, and I think for most people, the truth of it all is that you follow the royal family because you like monarchy as an institution. And you know that none of the other key players are bigger than the main character on the stage, which of course is always the monarch. The monarch is the son of the royal family stage. All the other members are just are working for her nobody outshines the monarch obviously the queen at the moment and it will be prince charles but nobody outshines the monarch they're all little you know little planets orbiting around the sun on this royal family stage they all have their important roles to play supporting the monarch in what they do and they can all have shining lights doing their projects and different foundations and you know the prince's trust has been incredible i mean even the queen you know hasn't started things you know probably arguably as success as successful as the prince's trust but they are all quietly supporting the main character the main focus which is the queen um we can love all of them we can love all of them equally um and for me they very much come as as a set almost like a big box of chocolates. They're all different. Um, all the chocolates are different. Uh, they all have different flavours. They all bring different things to the box, but they make up a colourful, flavourful box. Um, and of course, you know, the Queen is the royal box. And, you know, all the different, you know, chocolates make up this box. And for me, I like the whole box. I don't just like the fudge ones or the strawberry creams the, or the I don't know the liqueurs or whatever I like the whole box and you know I think for the majority of people that is what people feel as well um red amalgam thinks that the Andrew and Sarah photograph is overly opportunistic um Belines is speaking to me in I think Spanish. Shall I see if I can read your message in Spanish? Um, Hola, Elliot. ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo has estado viviendo todo lo um, relacionado al virus? Oh, I am fine. I do not have it. 
Um, I think that's what you said. Uh, and, oh, no, Prince Albert of Monaco has, yes. Um, Sheila says, do you wear your tiaras for occasions other than your vlogs? Yes, when I go shopping, when I put take the bin in, when <laughs> going on holiday, post going to the post office, you know. Uh, right, I'm skipping down some of the comments now because I want to kind of get to the bottom. Um, Holly says, I love your neutrality. Thank you so, so much. Uh, right, I'm going to carry on with a few more comments. So, um, well, actually, no, not comments. I'm going to read a few more stories. So the Queen also sent a Morn Day message. She posted it on her Twitter. Uh, but also Princess Eugenie shared it as well. So um, I also read that at the end of the vlog with Andrew and Sarah. So if you want to go and read what the Queen has said, um, because basically, you know, the, the, Monday, the Monday Thursday service had to be cancelled for obvious reasons. And, you know, this is the service when she would normally hand out the purses of Monday money. So she did still hand them out, not personally, she sent them and she sent um, each recipient a message as well. So if you haven't read that, watch my previous video and of course I will read you that message. Just one correction though, uh, when I was reading it, I said insurrection as a word and the actual word is instruction. So if you hear me say insurrection, it's not insurrection, it's instruction. I couldn't see, I think I probably need glasses. Um, so. <laughs> Just making one little correction that I can't correct now. Um, right, other news. The Order of the Garter will not take place. I think everyone knows pretty much that all of the summer royal events um, are not going to take place. So uh, the Order of the Garter usually takes place sort of June the 15th. Uh, it was due to take place this year uh, at St George's Chapel. It's when the Queen dresses up in all the big garter robes and... Um, you know, a lot of the garter knights walk down the big hill from Windsor Castle to St George's Chapel. That will not be going ahead today. Again, it's another one of those occasions that make us um, appreciate, I think, what we have. Because when it's gone, we begin to appreciate it a lot more. Prince Charles has also recorded an Easter Day, Easter Sunday message for uh, Westminster Abbey podcasts. Now, I do have some information on that. So I am going to post a link to that. I will, of course, share that link as well. So um, there will be, there, there's already some of these podcasts out, but Prince Charles features in the one, he does a reading and he features in one that will be played on Easter Day, well, released on Easter Day. So do go and check that out. Um, he's actually re uh, recorded a reading of the gospel for Easter Day. Um, so yeah, just go and check that out. Follow the link. It's called Abbeycast. So it's the Westminster Abbey Abbeycast podcast. And you will be able to, of course, see all of that. H London says, I will miss all of the summer events, especially the Royal Order of the Garter event. I think, um, yeah, there's, there's so much that we are going to miss. Right, I am reading down some comments. Um, Mercury Angel says, Sarah stood by her family regardless um, to who supported her. So yeah, um, she has survived a lot. She has indeed. Sarah most definitely is a survivor. Uh, right, I also want to share with you, I will also share the link, Royal Chefs. Now, Buckingham Palace, the official royal family, royal.uk site, has shared the recipe for Royal Easter Biscuits. Now, I think I might need to try these for my weekly vlog. Um, so I will share with you the recipe now. Uh, and of course, I will I will read it as well. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. Uh, where's the link? For some reason, the link has been removed. Hang on. No. Right, come back. There it is. I pressed the wrong button and it went from me. So bring back the bunnies. Here they are. So I've posted the Easter uh, biscuit recipe. They look gorgeous. Now I haven't got an Easter bunny cutter. 
so I don't know how I'm going to make the shape. But um, Royal Pastry Chefs are excited to share their spiced Easter biscuits with you to enjoy over the Easter weekend. So there is um, a YouTube video, so you can play that. Um, so the chefs, hats at the ready, everybody. Let us see your creations by tagging hashtag Royal Bakes on social media channels. So they want to see your bakes. So now is the chance to, to share your bakes. The recipe um, is also there as well. I'm not going to spend time reading the recipe, um, but I need some cutters. I do not have cutters. Um, so yeah, if you want to try your hand at Royal Baking and what might be a good idea is if I do a review myself, if I look at the hashtag once these bakes start to come in, I can actually do a little bit of a review and critique of people's bakes. Um, do you think that would be a good idea or not? Hey, Jen the King says, I just came back from the shop and I brought the ingredients ground ginger. Did you indeed? Um, hey, Trenton says, how can we help you achieve the 100,000 mark? Subscribe. If, you, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's the only way it's going to go up. Um, Holly Walker says, I'm a huge fan of the Cambridges. Um, Elaine says, you must make them and I will bake along with you. I, I think I need to make them, but I don't have any bunny cutters. Maybe I can order some off Amazon. Um, Louisa says, would love it if the higher-ups would start really supporting Harry and Meghan instead of just saying um, that they are. And HM the King is looking forward to baking. Um, right, there we go. Um, oh, also, yesterday, I forgot to say in my video, it was hashtag thankful Thursday. And each Thursday, of course, uh, most of the UK go outside at 8pm to clap. Uh, the previous two two weeks, it was clapping for the NHS. This week, it was cl clapping for the carers. But the royal family have also been spread um, highlighting um, a sector who needs a little bit of support uh, and praise during these difficult times. So this Thursday, um, yesterday, the royal family wanted to thank and celebrate the essential public service workers keeping the nation going. And this week's hashtag Thankful Thursday um, was for all of the people involved in food production and distribution. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, that is obviously crucial. Food production, distribution, shop workers who are, who are you know, staying open so that we can still shop and get food to live off and survive are vitally important key workers within our communities. So um, I would like to applaud the royal family for doing these hashtag thankful Thursdays because they really, really do help to spread a light on the unsung heroes out there who are working tirelessly within our communities to keep us safe, to keep us going. And they all deserve a really, really big thankful Thursday. Well, a thankful every day, to be quite honest. Um, Carol says, I have only good things to say about me. Thank you so much. Only reason I subscribe to this channel because of his fairness to Meghan and Harry. Um, there we go. Um, right, that is it. Um, I am going to go now. It's been a 38 minute chat. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found all the things that I've spoke about useful. Um, and yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And also, of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. Also, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. So from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye. Stay safe.